So the first question comes from Mike. And uh, it's a good question, and it's really the essential question to, to be asking. And that question is uh, about aggressiveness. So when do you be aggressive, and when do you not be aggressive? Um, he's basically giving a bit of a backdrop. Mike's saying that with the market moving higher, I want to focus on buying at support. But I also have in the back of my mind that we could pull back more before moving higher. So he's like, in this context, when is it good to be aggressive and buy support that is close to price? And when is it, when is it not good to be aggressive and wait for a stronger uh, support lower down? Uh, you know, how do you judge being aggressive? He says, the problem that I have is that if I wait to buy on a pullback, I may not get a chance to make a trade as price goes to support um, to an earlier support and just goes without pulling back more to where I'm waiting. And I mean, yeah, this is, Mike, this is the kind of quintessential problem of trading that we still face, you know, every single day in trading. This is what trading is really all about. And it's always this constant struggle between waiting, when do you really get in? Do you wait for a lower support zone or do you, um, if you're bullish, let's say, or do you get in more aggressively higher? And to make it, well, first, there's no one answer, and I hope that should be obvious by now because um, the markets are complex, as we've always said. Now, there are some things that can help you, though. Um, the way, you know, Awais and I look at it, and just over years of experience have come to think of it, is by looking at the trading environment and letting that determine how aggressive you need to be, okay? And so, really the question when you ask how aggressive should I be, it should really go back to, well, how much money can I make? I mean, it, it directly correlates how aggressive you should be with how much reward potential there is, okay? And so, what to really kind of narrow it down to the simplest of terms, you should be aggressive in higher volatility environments, and you should be selective in lower volatility environments. That's as basic as I can get. And so, just to get a little more detailed, what does that mean? Well, when volume is really low, when the relative volume um, is low and we're having small ranges, you know, up until today, which, you know, we got a nice expanded range, about 17 points or so in the S&P, but up until today, we've been having some tiny ranges. We're having six, seven point ranges and extremely light volume. Um, you know, half the volume that we usually get on days, and uh, again, you got to be keeping track of the relative volume. If you have market delta, the indicator just shows it to you. If not, it's not a big deal. You just look at a chart, and, and you can just see is volume looking lighter than it usually looks on a day. And if we're having light volume, and you can just tell just from pure price action, it's choppy, it's extremely slow. I'm sure you get bored by it, so you should know if you're bored <laughs> and it's barely moving. That's a low volatility environment. In those kind of environments, it's not that good trades don't set up. You can still get decent reward to risk trades. It's that the, the odds of you actually being able to get in and hold it to that with that sometimes hours of chop that ensue become much lower. And so that's when you really want to just to kind of stay selective and if you're bullish and it's this really slow dead environment all right and you have a support zone above and then another one below you might think okay I know it could hit this the, the first support zone and and go from there but I'm not gonna buy it there because if it does hit and go from there how much could it possibly go maybe only a few points um, am I going to have conviction to hold through it up there? It's going to be so choppy, blah, 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 you know what I mean? So you, you just think of it that way. So you'll think, okay, in this instance, this is not the environment where I'm going to make a killing, all right? Because at best, maybe I'll get a one, one good opportunity, and for it to work out, it'll probably span several hours. And so these are the times where I kind of want to preserve capital and wait for my extreme prices. And if I get them, great. And if I don't, that's fine. I won't think of it as a mistrade. I'll just have to deal with it. Okay. And in those instances, it gets to the first support zone, you skip. You say, okay, fine. If it goes from here, what, there's nothing I can do. But if it gets to the next one, that's where I'm buying. And an example of that could be like yesterday, um, Thursday in the, in the S &P, I mean Tuesday in the S&P, where the market pulls back and, and kind of hits that first 
the, the gap fill in the first support zone that was around 90.75 or something like that, um, or 90 quarter. And you could have bought there, but it was better to just let it wait and flush all the way through. And so the better buy was down closer to 86, which was another support zone. But then once you've, since it's low volume and now you've already moved from 94 down to 86, which is eight points straight down, it's more likely to be exhausted and the range is probably likely to be done for the day. And so you might then just want to buy it there. So that's how you have to think of it. It's And when you have expanded volatility and expanded volume and, and you're likely to see bigger ranges, well, you, then you know anytime you get in, right, with a relatively tight stop, you could have a three, four, you know, reward to risk trade on pretty quickly and it could work out really well. So it almost always makes sense to enter at, you know, be a little more aggressive in where you enter. That doesn't mean you just start entering in the middle of nowhere just because you think you can move big. That's one of the mistakes I made early in my career is when I'd get into high volatility environments, then I'd think just because I can visualize and project moves out, I'd start thinking, well, I can't miss this potential big move, so let me enter. I'd start entering in the middle of nowhere and I'd just get completely chopped up. So the point is you still wait for your sport resistance zones, but maybe now you know, you enter at the first one, and if that's a loss, then you enter again at the second one, right? Whereas in the slower ones, you only wait for the second one. So I hope that kind of helps, but that's really how you have to think about it. Okay, so let's go on to uh, another question. So Stephen um, asks kind of a similar one, but on a more narrow level. So Stephen's question is a question I'm sure all of you kind of go through too, which is, um, you know, a question regarding when to get in at a zone and um, Stephen's question is or where to get in so like he says yesterday on Thursday um, I missed the long setup which you see on your screen that I was talking about before um, at 86 because I was waiting for 85.75 like he had the zone there and he wanted it two ticks below the zone and in, inside the zone and he had a 2.5 point stop so he's like, I know it's perfectly okay to miss a trade once in a while, and it is. However, do you guys have any suggestions on what to look for before deciding if we should take a trade at the top of a zone versus the middle of a zone versus the bottom of a zone? And the answer to that, again, depends on the context, obviously, like it, like it always does. And in this one, I mean, okay, so in this instance, you are already conservative if you're waiting all the way down to here in general. It's generally conservative trade location with that kind of low volume environment and we've already moved eight points down so it's unlikely to just keep breaking. So at that point the way you think of it is okay I already have generally conservative trade location now how conservative or aggressive do I want to be within the zone right and there it just it's a matter of um, basically how how much conviction you have in the trade you know for me when I'm when I was trading that trade I got in at 86 quarter because I had a lot of conviction that this could be a good long setup and even though I was front running the zone by a bit I knew I didn't want to miss it and I was willing to take a little more risk not to miss the trade other times I don't other times I wait for it to flush right into the middle of the zone there's no exact answer but it's it's contextual it's um it's literally you ask yourself how much conviction do I have in this okay do I really feel like this is a great trade that I can't wait to get into and if that's the case then take it at the top of the zone right uh, one other thing that might help you is if you think that you have so much conviction in this trade that if it then goes higher you'll be so tempted to later enter higher right then you might wanna be um, you know then you might want to take it right there because you don't want to be then tempted to get in at higher, worse prices later because you just have a lot of conviction in the direction. If you don't have as much conviction, but you think, well, if it got this low, then for sure I'd take it because we'd, we'd probably get a good bounce and wait for the middle of the zone. So it all depends. Like when, when you get a trending move, like I talk about in the training, your goal is just to get on board. Right? And if you're getting a trending move and now you're revisiting a zone, most of the time it just makes sense to get in right at the beginning of the zone so you don't miss the move. Right? Other times it might make sense to just wait for that exhaustion extreme and then get in you know, at the edge or in the middle of the zone. So it, it, it all depends. Um, you could, to make it much simpler on yourselves, 
just have a rule. <laughs> and your rule could be, look, I don't want to do all this con contextual real-time analysis on this level, and that's fine. You know, your rule could be, look, I have zones, I've done my homework, I do all this, I'm just going to put a, an order right at the beginning of the zone every time. And that could be something. Now, sometimes you're going to get worse reward to risk because you could have waited, but but at other times you won't miss the trade at least that way. So that's personal. It could be if you if you're okay with the ambiguity, then you just do it as it comes and you judge it. If not, then you could make it more systematic and just make a rule for yourself. Like I'm always going to take it at the beginning of the zone, but then don't beat yourself up if it goes you know through and you could have gotten a better price. Whatever it is. Just accept that these are the rules I'm making for myself to make my decision making more systematic easier and just do it. All right? There's no right answer. All right? So whatever helps you, do whatever works, whatever feels right to you.